Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you this day thankful with grateful hearts for all that you have done for us. You have preserved us, protected us. No matter what is going on in our lives, you have given us the wherewithal to think. You have given us the ability to somehow we are breathing, somehow we are here. And we give all glory, honor, and praise to you and to your son's name, the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, the name at which every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Lord, would you guide us on our journey this day? Would you fill me with thy Holy Spirit? May you give me a keen sense of discernment for each person, each business, each strategy, for your kingdom's sake. May you do a work in each of their hearts and lives. This is about you, your will for our lives, in each of us as we try to just walk in obedience to the one who gave all for us and for whom we give all of ourselves. Bless our time together. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Wonderful. Well, go ahead and, and, and unmute. This is uh, for those of you who mm. haven't uh, been able to, to join us in the past. You'll, you'll know that, um, you know, this, these times are truly, uh, the, or all, the entire time is for us to interact. Uh, and it is, it is very, very much a hands-on on process where we will be going through each of your businesses. Now, not all of you were here uh, last week, so I'm, I want to get caught up with a few of you uh, so that I have all of that. I appreciate those who uh, submitted that through the college uh, email as you were instructed, and that helped tremendously. And then also, uh, I want to just quickly remind you of this week's uh, assignments which is basically three steps, threefold. Number one is the lecture. So you watch the lecture, uh, that's on your own time. Uh, and then the second one is share. And that is the function that we have to be able to talk back and forth throughout the week. Okay, so things that are specifically that you may come up with a question and you have this and you need that. Uh, does anybody have any ideas on how I can do that? Those are the type things you should use that chat for. So that uh, you, you watch the lecture, you share, which means communicate uh, throughout the week, and then finally uh, work. And of course we have allotted 10 hours is what you should be working on your business each week. That is in addition to your full-time job. Okay, so if you're working uh, 40 hours a week uh, for someone else, uh, then you will still want to, um, uh, you know, you, you need to work 10 hours uh, on your own business. Okay. So, so that's how, that's how it works. Um, all right. Very good. Very good. <clears throat> so with that, let me, uh, I've been able to, uh, let me see if we have certain people on. Uh, let me just run through it. I don't see uh, uh, Mr. Jehoish uh, Keolo. Uh, uh, is uh, Solomon Nwasa, uh Let's see here. Nwasia. No. Um, I don't have, I uh, see Bruce Kimjor. Yes, Booker uh, Amandi, I see you, uh, sir, uh, on. If you would kindly unmute and un uh, your video so we can uh, communicate and we can uh, catch up, uh, catch you up. Yes. And let me see, is uh, Risper uh, Rambaya on or James Katuta? Yes, I'm on, sir. Okay, which which one was that? Oh, James, wonderful, wonderful. Booker, Booker is also on. Yes, yes, Booker, I'm coming to you next. 
Uh, I'm just wanting to see who we, okay. All right, very good. Let, uh, so Booker, uh, what is your business? Uh, what are you starting, growing? Uh, what, what is it that you're going to, to start here with uh, the Rowan College School of Entrepreneurship? Uh, Booker? Okay, uh, I think, I'm not sure what happened to his audio. Uh, Booker, I'm going to move past and uh, we'll come back. Uh, I think when he started trying to talk, maybe it messed up on his connection. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Yes, what, what business are you starting or, or building? Uh, okay, uh, first and foremost, the, the business I'm starting or building, uh, I want to, to, to venture in uh, two fronts of business. The one I, I forwarded was uh, I was venturing into the engineering sector. Okay. Uh, yeah, but uh, venturing into the engineering sector, what service are you going to provide? Uh, engineering service are you going to provide? So uh, the services that I wanted to provide in the engineering sector are one, I wanted to, to deal with the motor vehicle industry. Okay. Where I do supplies, service of the motor vehicle repairs and maintenance, and also sourcing and uh, selling the motor vehicles to different clients. Uh, selling the plans? To selling the, the vehicles. So you want to engineer them and, and manufacture them? Uh, not, not necessarily manufacturing, but selling uh, the vehicles that are already manufactured. So like uh, a broker, I buy them from the manufacturer, then sell it to the end customer. Okay. So, so, yeah. are, so do you want to be an engineer? Uh, are, are you an automotive engineer or are you going to uh, focus on the brokering? I'm going to focus on the brokerage because uh, I'm not an automobile engineer. I'm an auditor. Very good. Uh, yes. Okay. Now we're speaking the same language. <laughs> um, <Yeah>. <laughs> um, okay. That's going to be great, um, and, I, and uh, that is a very specific niche, and uh, there is uh, things to be learned to be successful at that. So, uh, and I've got some just exciting. You know, that'll be a fun one for us to do. Um, okay. Have you ever? Are you? Have you done that before? Do you have know the auctions? Do you uh, where to get them, or are you wanting uh, to try to? get actually uh, yeah 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 have you done anything like that before okay uh, uh what what i've done I, I, it's my it's my field of interest so what i've been doing is uh, doing research on how the business is done so what i've managed to do there are different uh there are different programs, media programs that I've watched, like the Wheeler Dealer, Metal Works, they are all American uh, TV programs. And uh, they, they show how they source the vehicle. Some of them they source, then they custom made in their own way, then they sell them back. Or uh, when uh, a client comes in, give them the specs, the, the specification of the the type of vehicle that they want, then he goes to the cast, uh, to the manufacturer. Then, uh, with the with the specifications, then he sells back. So it's it's it, it's it's something I've done. I, 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 I've I've worked. I've read books about. I, I've watched programs. I've, I've I've gone to some of the bazaar car bazaars that sells the vehicles to see. So it's just a field of interest. Yes. And, and, yes, and that's the reason why I want to venture in that. Okay. Yeah. I completely get it. Uh, 
I completely get it. Okay. So now uh, that, that helps me know kind of where we're starting from. Uh, yes. and, and that's what, uh, that, that's, that's very important for me. So I appreciate that. Um, okay. okay. Very good. James, uh, if you would kindly let me know what yeah. business you're, you're starting or growing here, that would be great. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, mine is already a running business, uh, which I'm involved in together with my family. That's my wife. Uh, we are running two businesses under one umbrella. We are doing uh, one, breathing services, uh, where we do branding. Uh, we do promotional materials for, uh, for corporate and individuals. And the other hand, uh, personal, I'm an IT person. I do supply IT accessories, that's parts of computers and uh, whatever, what, whatever is used and, or enhances IT. So basically that's the model I, I want to improve and uh, I want to enhance on. Okay, so you're one both both businesses. Um, the IT, uh, tell me about, uh, so are you, is that already started? You already have some clients, or no? You're looking to start. Uh, yeah, the business is already running for quite a few years now, uh, running to four years. Uh, I have a few clients with me, uh, but I want to improve on that. Uh, same as the printing business, we both of them uh, we started at the same time because my wife was running the the, uh, the printing part of it. I was doing the IT part of it. But as of now, we are doing all of them together. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, not, not, I mean, not a bad idea at all. Uh, and your IT clients, it's, that's an easy add-on sale with promotional marketing materials and products and widgets and gadgets, um, trinkets, <laughs> uh, swag. There's all kinds of names for those, uh, the, the products for the promotional marketing business. Uh, yes, you are sure, yes. So how, how many years ha has it been in existence? Uh, close to five years now. This was started back in two, 2014. Okay. Okay. All right, that helps me understand kind of where we are and what's the objective? Like, what would you like to see happen? Uh, like reasonably, what, what, is, uh, what does success look like for you here related to the business? Uh, okay, my main objective for joining this class and, and being here is I want to enhance my marketing skills I want to enhance my market, uh, and I'm here to gain knowledge on that, on how to do that. And two, I need also to see what 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 others are doing that I'm not doing, that is making them better than I am, so that I can improve on that. I think that is excellent. <clears throat> I think that is brilliant. Uh, you know, you. there are two ways to learn mistakes and mentors. Yeah. Mistakes is the costly. It always costs much more and takes a lot longer. Uh, yeah. Mentors, uh, which is basically what you said, learning from what other people are doing that's working uh, and, and in other industries and applying it to your business and your industry, uh, to me, is the absolute fastest way to succeed with the least amount of financial capital and resources. So um, I give that to the class uh, to take note uh, of the two ways to learn because you will all have to choose at different points in your life. And do you know why most of you will end up going with choosing mistakes? Because of our own sinful nature of pride. Because we all think, especially entrepreneurs, we rationalize. We say, well, but I'm different. Or, but my situation is different. 
or my business is different. They just don't understand. It won't do that here. It won't work for me in this situation. I've, this is my, you know, I've got this unique thing uh, going on. And so it doesn't apply. We rationalize. And so we go our own way out of just sheer humanistic pride, uh, arrogance, and ego. And um, uh, even, and so that's one of the reasons why I stopped giving advice and counsel uh, back in uh, 2007, I think is when I stopped it, maybe 2006, because I realized that people were, you know, trying to meet with me and take me to lunch and do all these. I even got to where I was doing like three lunches for uh, people wanting to, you know, back to back to back. So I'd have an appetizer at the first one, a main course at the next one and a coffee at the third one. And, and but you know what I realized? I stopped doing that after a very short period of time because I realized I was wasting my time. I realized they wanted to know what it took to be successful, but they weren't willing to go do it anyway. The price was too great. It's almost like when the rich man came to, uh, the rich young ruler came to Jesus and said, what my stud, you know, how will I enter the kingdom of heaven? And he says, you must be born again, you know, and give away all you have um, uh, to the poor and follow me. That, and, and, you know, he, it says he went away sad. It's like, I don't want to pay that price for it. I don't want to do that. So people were coming to me on how to build a successful business uh, or how to, you know, increase financially. And, and they were really walking away going, I knew they weren't willing to change their life or lifestyle to get there. So I felt like I was not investing in the right people or the right place or, you know, and so I struggled with that for a long time. Uh, and, and, and really these huddles ha, and I started some entrepreneur work doing entrepreneur workshops for underprivileged underserved communities um, uh, in 2014 and then have been doing uh, that helping them start business and then I started the international down syndrome CEO camp to help those with disabilities start businesses to empower them but um, other than that this outlet through Roland College and the School of Entrepreneurship is the only setting that I give business counsel anymore, unless it's a paid consulting client, but that's, you know, not a lot of companies that can afford that. So this is the only outlet uh, to do that. And so it's important to me that you understand the difference between learning by mistakes and mentors. I can give people the counsel and then they go still try to do it their own way. I always used to tell people whenever they'd come and say it, whenever they start their sentence to me this way, uh, I'd like your, to get your opinion on something. I always just kind of stop them and say, how, who else have you talked to about this? Because who else, who else's opinion have you received and, and solicited? The reason that's important is because I need to know, I have to know, uh, are you just taking a poll? Because I can promise you, my, my counsel is probably going to be different. So if you're trying to see, well, if nine out of 10 people give me the same answer, then I'm going to do that. I'm going to be the one, not as part of the nine. Because if you, because you probably, if you're poor and broke, you're probably asking your other poor, broke friends what they should do. Or people who don't have longevity in success. Um, uh, if you had asked me when I was 21 how to get rich, I would have told you, but it's, and it would have made, it made me a few million dollars. But I lost it. I, it, that, it wasn't built right. So you can learn the wrong thing that will end up hurting you. And, and, and especially, it's so funny to me, when people ask people for a, advice from people that have never done it, you know, what good does it do to ask mom and dad how to, what you should do, invest in this business or that business, when they've never invested in a business or grown a business or started a business or had the, a business at the level that you want to have. So be careful uh, you know, number one, what counsel you listen to. They say you should always listen twice. First, what's being said. Second, to who's saying it. Listen twice to everything. 
because it's not about just the information. It's about the, the credibility uh, and the, the track record of the person saying it. Are they saying what they're saying from decades of experience, decades of doing it, decades of hurt, decades of pain, uh, decades of ups and downs, wins and losses, because you're no good if you haven't ever lost. You don't, you're no good if you haven't failed because you've never pushed the boundary and the envelope to not succeed to a degree that you would have expect others expect or you expect it. So these are some thoughts, some general thoughts that I just wanted to kind of springboard based on um, as we as we embark here, because to me, these are critical issues. This is critical to successful entrepreneurship. Um, and it's there are common mistakes that I see entrepreneurs make all around the world. Uh, so Lord willing, we can can prevent that from happening. All right, you should have been working on the business startup guide. Let me ask this, is there anyone on that I haven't gone through your business with? Um, well, uh, hello, Dr. Roland. Uh, this is Priska Kambole. Uh, yes, greetings. Yeah. Yeah, from Zambia. Well, I mean, I haven't, I have just joined today in this uh, huddle that you are doing now, but we did interact, you yeah. know, way back through that funding uh, tour thing. So I don't know. Um, yes, please, uh, go ahead and uh, uh, let me, I know that uh, you're waiting on uh, to hear the results of funding. Uh, yes. And can you give me the uh, quick update on the business at large? Because I know you were looking at branding uh, some things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the business is, uh, um, it, 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 it's really, um, I could call it a milling maybe business because we are, we, 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 we are packaging uh, cassava, cassava meal and, um, and millet, so we are grinding millet and we are grinding cassava and we want to add on also sorghum and packaging it uh, nicely and selling it into, uh, you know, shops, yeah, to in, you know, supermarkets. Big box. Yeah. Supermarket. yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, last year, I remember the last time that we interacted because of COVID, you know, uh, things were really bad. Our sales were very, very low. And then, so I have been, you know, really working hard, pushing, pushing, looking for markets, uh, you know, in different ways. And uh, I must say that now things are looking up. Uh, 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 one of the biggest chain stores, actually the biggest chain store shop right in Zambia, uh, they have got like uh, 30, 35, 36 stores. So now they have uh, they they have uh, they have rolled out our product to 29 of their stores. Actually, I just received an email just you know when I was just about to enter this hurdle on the 30th store. Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. So this is really this is looking up for us, and uh, things are going well. I can say in terms of our our sales. So the, our sales are, are, are now, you know, picking up, and uh, yeah, we hope now that you know. For me, uh, uh, the vision is to really get more products, uh, um, you know, more, more products to onboard more products, uh, because the opportunity is out there for us, you know, that we may bring in, you know, uh, more products uh, into into the store. So my challenges, my major challenge is that it's very expensive, you know, to do the, the branding, the, the, the packaging and, you know, all, all, all that, that sort of thing. Um, while trying to buy the, you know, the stocks for the product. So that's, that's my biggest hurdle into trying to get the other products, you know, rolled out into ShopRite. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, so... I want to address that, but before I do, I want to get back to one of the things that, be, and congratulations on the increased number of stores they put you in. I know, you know, I, when we first started talking, you know, it was in the teens. Uh, and then of course, then you grew into the twenties and now you're at 29 or 30 stores. 
So mm -hmm. congratulations on that. Uh, and we've talked about point of sale displays, uh, yeah, yeah. And customer engagement inside of the, the, the stores to the store. set your products yeah. apart. And then one other thing, and it was more of a what they call guerrilla marketing tactic, mm -hmm. uh, which was in some of the outlying communities, especially since you're on the border, uh, uh, having having other women that mm -hmm. were uh, basically like resellers in their community of your product. Mm -hmm. uh, were you able to make any headway on that and get uh, uh, some grassroots in the communities where they don't have a shop, right? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't made much progress on that. Um, we did make um, um, uh, attempts. We, we, we went to the border and uh, we, we, we negotiated with these women on how you know, we can be selling the, uh, the product in the big bags and then they will you know, then decant into smaller bags and so on. But then we discovered that those marketeers, they're just so clever they want to really engage you and bring your price down as much as possible. So when we went the next time, the first visit was just really engaging, looking at the market and trying to find customers. And we sort of like made deals, you know, with uh, one or two women said, yes, you can bring, you know, the product and we will sell it. And then when we took the product, they said, no, they didn't want to get it at that price, you know? And they said they wanted to get it at a lower price. So we tried to, you know, figure out our numbers and we said, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's not going to work. They said, well, because they saw this person and this person are also selling and their price is lower than ours. And so, we, you know, we think, you know, our product won't sell. And um, that's how I gave up. And um, the, my, my, my staff whom I sent there, we're saying, well, maybe the best thing we can do is uh, is have our own store, like you know, like just have our own store there and 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 place our our goods there. I am kind of reluctant at the moment because I'm wondering how you know the management, the the control in terms of sales and you know all that thing is is going to uh, is going to take place. Yeah, it's it's kind of difficult. It's, it's it's so, but now I am talking with someone who is a distributor, so he's he he's he's already got a foot in the Congo because he sells, he apparently uh, imports um, fresh fresh uh, sea you know fish from Namibia from the coast in Namibia, and then transports this fish in you know trucks and gets the fish across, you know, the Congo. Yeah. So he, so we, we, we've been talking with this guy because he's, he, 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 uh, his challenge was not having his own transportation, uh, but depending on other people's tracks. So that has been a, like a, you know, a, a constraint on his side. So he's now looking for, for, for financing and whatever, and things seem to be working with wherever he's been, you know, searching, uh, where he wants to now buy his own trucks so that he can, you know, uh, aggregate, get all this stuff and gets it across the Congo. Right. So he thinks that that is, you know, going to work and probably that way our products, you know, can get their way into the Congo. So that's what I thought, maybe let me focus on this and, uh, I've sort of, you know, forgotten about those marketeers. I don't know whether I should go back. Yeah. No, I, I agree that uh, don't go back at this time uh, yeah. because there's a lot of things that are the right strategies at the wrong time. Uh, that yeah. particular strategy was because the big box supermarkets were uh, slowing down. We did yeah, not yeah. know how long COVID was going to impact them yeah. or shut them down completely. Um, and, and so that was that was a, a, a short-term tactic that, uh, but to your point, when, if you, the, the key is having the right marketers and marketeers, yeah. uh, if, if, if when they came back and said after they had agreed and then wanted a lower price, you, you did the right thing. You knew that it was, uh, I mean, that's just greed and, yeah. uh, and it doesn't work. 
and and that's yeah. you now and, and guys just so you know i mean that's one of the things that uh everyone is uh, i think struggles with here uh is that um uh you have to have the right people this one of the greatest struggles in entrepreneurship and in running a business is in getting the right people um yeah. and so what uh, and, and that can hurt you but the other thing and this is one of the problems with people all over the all over um uh, Africa, and it's one of the things that has held African entrepreneurs back on the global stage, is companies uh, in the U.S. and Europe. They would work deals with an African company, and then they would come back and say, "Well, now we after they, there was an agreement, they would come back and say, well, yeah, but now we want it done like this. Uh, we yeah. want this price, and they change it, and so mm -hmm. that has caused uh, lack of trust." Um, and, and then that has, that, so that has really been a, a difficult situation, um, uh, between countries, but if, but, but isn't this just spiritual meaning mm -hmm. if, if people do what biblically, uh, what you say you're going to do, you should do be, out of integrity. Yeah. And, and, and so if people would just do what uh, their word and and be uh, have integrity, then none of these things would be an issue. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I look at that and, and uh, this is not a just a cultural problem. Mm. This is a spiritual problem. Yeah. And and so I. Uh, I think it's important that we see things that way uh, because I think that that's how the Lord sees it. Um, and if we can, once again, I, we're trying to, 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 uh, you know, build kingdom businesses. And so, um, so that's what, that's what we look for. Um, okay. Very good. Very good. Um, let me say this about um, the products now. Um, the, the products, you've got to be careful of, of which we've talked about it, but, um, mm -hmm. if that is the last resort, meaning that that truly is the right time to do it, usually it's, be, it's, it's because you already have good sales of the primary product that you've got in there. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer in class, right? Make sure you understand this strategy. It's called mm. the land and expand strategy. Land and expand. Mm. Uh, and uh, that is exactly what uh, 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 Ms. Kimbole is talking about here, uh, which they have landed. They are in the stores. Now they're looking at, to expand their footprint. Uh, a lot of people try and go sell a thousand licenses or sell 5,000, you know, rolls of toilet paper to the, whatever it is they're trying to sell, they try and make one big sale as opposed to making a little sale, getting their foot in the door and then expanding. So land the account, then expand the account. And that is what has happened. And she's done it, not just in number of stores that carry the product line, but also in uh, the, and now we're talking about the number of products. So the, the real question is, on the number of on, on on the on adding these new products uh is it uh what's it going to do to your margin uh you've got to look at um which product is going to be uh, give you the most net cash flow has the highest margin uh and that yet also will have a uh, significant volume so if you have something that's the highest uh, margin but it's going to have low volume that's not the good next product. Um, if you uh, have something that you can manufacture and, or if it's going to take a lot of uh, money for new machinery or new equipment, new packaging, uh, then, then you, that, that's got to be a factor. So do you know exactly what is the smartest next product for you to add to the store? Um, I, I, I should say yes. Well, well, let me say yes and no, <laughs> because uh, <laughs> uh, when we started, 
uh, remember my background, was, was the, 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 the background and inspiration for this project is that, you know, we are a social enterprise. We wanted to uplift yes. the lives of poor women. And these are the crops they grow. You know, they grow cassava, yes. they grow millet, they grow sorghum. And we want to, to um, uh, uh, we, we want to enhance commerce of these products yeah. so that you know they can have value, they can have a better added value and better incomes when their products are going into these you know upmarket shops. If you like, mm -hmm. you know then they they will have better income. Then we 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 will be assured customers you know all the time going back to them and buying what they what they produce. And so the idea was really not to even think about, you know, how is the uh, traction of these products going to be in the shops, but it's like, we wanna help these women, this is what they do, and this is how we can help them. And then also, on the other hand, these are products, uh, you know, that we grew traditionally. I mean, we, you never found cassava meal packed in, in, in a shop, in a shop, in a mall. We found these products at markets. Uh, because they were, you know, they, they're just now, it, it's a new um, uh, 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 trend or industry or product that's coming up in, in nicely, conveniently packed yeah. and, you know, things like that. Yeah. So I don't know yet. Uh, I can't compare. I think I can't compare now with the cassava meal because we haven't pushed out the millet yet into shop, right? Okay. And the sorghum to see, you know, how it's gonna, you know, it, it, it's going to perform. Right. Uh, but you know, just um, just the other day, I was talking to this other woman about a, a cat food, and I bounced it off the shop right manager, and then he says, "Ah, that's an interesting idea. I want a sample of that immediately, mm. because most apparently." No one in Zambia, no local Zambian makes dog food or cat food or bird food. Mm. All that stuff is imported from South Africa. Mm. And um, we, you know, local people generally, I mean, if I had a cat, I don't think I would go into ShopRite to buy food for a cat. I would say, you know, run around and kill a rat or a lizard or something and have your dinner, you know. That's the kind of thing. But, you know, there is a market apparently for these products because we've got lots of expatriates. We've got lots of people now, you know, that are realizing that he's, in fact, the manager said there are very few shops that would, we would stock the cat food. We won't stock it in a, in a shop right store, in a, uh, in a compound, in a, you know, in a high density, you know, area uh, shop right store because they won't buy it, you know, but the few uh, upmarket, you know, uh, uh, places, shops, there is good business there. And it says the, the only Zambian who was doing it was actually importing it in bulk from South Africa and then, you know, repack in, in packages here. Now, because of COVID, you know, he, it's been difficult to have these products coming in. So right now, I'm actually, tomorrow, I'm supposed to see one of the ShopRite buyers to take this cat food. So I, um, you know, I, I am really wanting to grab, actually, anything that I can get my hands on, which they can be interested in, and, you know, and see how it will perform on the shelves. Right. But of course, there is now the aspect of um, the, the, um, the the, 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 the the preparation, let me call it the preparation of that product to be accepted in shop right now. That's where the gist of the matter is. That's where the cost is, you know, the packaging and branding and, you know, all those things. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, is, is it a dry or refrigerated cat food? It's a refrigerated cat food. Yeah. Apparently. Um, Sorry? There's shelf life issues, refrigerated. Exactly, yeah, for, uh, shelf life issues and the, the shelf life uh, for that cat food is three months. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. 
So, and yeah, so that's yet another product uh, that it sounds like it, it, it may be getting in. Um, okay, so I, the final question I, I, I have is, um, were you ever able to find a way, a clever way of including either the stories or somehow the, that when people purchased these products, these specific products, it was helping actual uh, women uh, in, in either having their picture or their story or, you know, things like that. Um, uh, connecting your pro or or we talked about even have, have have some kind of signage or display that said you know 100 percent from you know women entrepreneurs or women farmers or you, you know uh, something to really tell the story uh, behind the brand not just selling a product yes we did um we did we 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 did put um a, uh, a yes we did have something on the package actually which says let me just give me one sec let me just get the packet okay so we 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 we, we actually included something which says you know proudly zambian supporting smallholder farmers in zambia okay yeah that's that Turn your video on, uh, okay. so so we can show that. Okay, so can you see it? I see the proudly Zambian, and then go, yeah. Just, so, okay, there I see, I see. Yeah. So then here, and then we put the partners here. You know that the 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 Minister of Agriculture, because actually we got the uh, the capital injection. You know to do this packaging and everything from a from funding from a core proposals that was done through the Minister of Agriculture, where they were trying to where you know promote the value chains of some of the products, and cassava was one of them. And then we we picked on that one. And then it was, you know, they thought it was a very good idea and a very good project, and they helped us, uh, gave us, uh, you know, money, and we managed to, you know, to work on everything and have this product, you know, packaged the way it is. So I remember there was one shop actually, uh, Food Lovers, the manager for for that shop, when we were trying to sell the product there, he just looked at this and says, you know, why I want to support you because of this. And he was pointing to the on the sentence, uh, but then there was another marketing guide, some other organization who was saying, "Well, why are you putting this on your package? This is too much stuff. You know, get it out and whatever." And the, and then somebody, and then I meet somebody else who says, "No, don't remove it, Priska. You keep it here for the rest of the life of this product." You know, so I was like, "What? This guy is supposed to be a marketing? Uh, you know, I don't know." We, what it shows you is you will never please everyone. And, yeah. and even business people will have completely opposite uh, uh, perspectives. I always go back to Bill Gates and Microsoft and versus yeah. Steve Jobs and Apple. They both yeah. have the ministry, but they had completely opposite versions of what it should look like and how yeah. it should operate, how it should feel. Uh, and, and same thing with a lot of uh, automotive you know, manufacturers and different industries. But um, but I, I have a, I from the package I have a question. Yes. Uh, do you get any sales from like call in orders because you've got your phone number on the package? So do people call you to order it or do they only go to the store and you have your email on there? So what kind of phone calls and what kind of emails are you getting because you put it on the package? What are they asking or wanting? yeah? Uh, the, the the only phone call I have gotten is um is somebody you know telling me how they love the product. Yeah, uh, yes. I remember I was so scared when I got this call. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Here it goes, you know, here it comes. Yeah. Let me have what is, yeah. <laughs> what is in our product? But then the woman says, oh, you know, a friend of mine bought this package. And then she said, she called me and said, we have found the right cassava meal at last on the market. Your product is fresh. It's you know it's good. It's so white. We 
we, we like it and we want to buy. Where is the store in Lusaka? You know, I'm in Kitwe, like, you know, seven hours away from Lusaka. Where is this? Where are the stores in Lusaka where I can buy it? Mm -hmm. And I was ready. I was so thrilled. I was ready to transport that product to that lady from, from Kitwe. And she says, no, 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 don't bother yourself. I will go to the stores in Lusaka that are, are stocking your, your product and I'll buy it from there. So that, that's one of the calls that I have, actually just one call, that particular call. And I think maybe just about two with another person wanting to know um, where to buy, to buy or, or something, yeah. Not, not, not many people phone actually, or even email. That's the only call that I've received I can remember, yeah. Okay. All right, uh, I was just, uh... Uh, uh, curious and interested because uh, obviously if, if you were, if that's going to, that could be a great source of, um, uh, of where you're going to uh, go next, new markets to your point of Lasaka. It lets you know, in fact, it may let potential partners reach out to you. Um, so I think that is, uh, that is very good. Um, but of course, if you if if it's not working, it, then uh, in terms of if it's not helping in sales and they're only using it for kind of uh, feedback, then you might want to on future iterations reduce the number, uh, reduce the size of that, so it's not the same prominence as mm -hmm. the messaging of uh, the, the uh, small the whole uh, small farming. Um, because it, it, it's given the same amount of attention, which I, I think would be wise if, but only if, uh, uh, you know, people were, were using that, but they're not. So, so that's just something to consider. Okay, thank you so much. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Yes. No, with pleasure. If it was working and, and really getting something great, but here's the deal. If somebody wants to partner with you or wants you to, to bring you into their city, uh, or their country, it could be really small. They will scour, no matter how small the font, anywhere on that, everywhere on that bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because that's what we entrepreneurs do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, that was just kind of a, a side thing that I wanted to. Uh, mm. yeah, so, okay, very good, Priska. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. Please, uh, we'll continue the dialogue on, um, you know, on on uh, on the results. Uh, pending results here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, now what I want to do is um, go to uh, make, go ahead and pull out your business starter startup guides. Um, and some of you emailed those to the college. Um, and I want you to tell us, walk through some of the decisions that you made this week um, about your business. And maybe uh, Zipporah, uh, let's start with you uh, because uh, you had some next steps that you were going to do this week. And so if you would kindly update us uh, on those, let me, uh, uh, that would be fantastic. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, I was going to, hello everyone. I was going to start on uh, doing my records yes. was uh, previously, I can just say it was a uh, bad shape because I was not doing very good. Mm. Now I went ahead and laid down on all the records for the, uh, for this business of chicken. And um, I have drawn the charts for the daily egg production. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have someone on the ground who does that for me. And uh, I, let me say this, this um, we live in Nairobi, but where my business is in Kitui County, but uh, it works well with me because I am able to go there almost on a weekly uh, basis to check on that. But as for the records, when they are done, she's, uh, I'm able to, to call and get uh, uh, like, for example, the eggs which are laid every day. So I did the records like starting from May 5th, from the number of eggs, 
that uh, were hatched each day. So right now um, it's not doing very well because um, uh, I changed uh, on the on the feed and it really affected the hatching. It really went very low. And uh, so the records have not been, uh, it's just, uh, I have uh, the numbers, but they have been going really low. But I, when I realized the problem, I was able to change the feeds and now I'm expecting it to get better. But as for the records, I'm doing now the daily, daily egg records and also the feeds, the feeds that are given, the portions every day, the ratios. And I realized that we were doing, we were not feeding them very well. So I have to also increase on the feeds, which uh, I was able to do that over the weekend when I went uh, home and I was able to, to purchase more and increased on the number of feeds, which now I have to get the records every day and that is ongoing now. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So you have that process in place. Um, yes. Now, I know that you had submitted uh, information on Serengeti Farms this week. Uh, I like the name. Um, what uh, can you walk walk us through some of the decisions that you made on your business? So one of the distinctions that I want to, everyone to always understand is as entrepreneurs, it's a you were constantly working in the business, like actually doing the work. And then we have to step back and work on the business not just in the business. So working on the business is the structural part and the strategy part. And am I, is my labor is going in the right direction? And, and then you go do the labors, uh, that's working in the business. So I know obviously with the startup guide is it's working on the business. So can you share with us some of the things that you uh, uh, made decisions on this week on that front? Uh, starting with the construction of a new house because I realized the one which I'm having currently is small as per the projection which I'm having. I would like it to grow. I'd like to, uh, to bring in uh, new chicks fresh to start, like kind of to start a fresh or to build on that. But I realized the house which uh, the chicks, the chicken are in right now is too small to bring in the new, the new um, chicken. So, uh, what I'd like to do is like basically starting again, like build now, do yeah. a house construction, yes, do all the structural construction that are required, and then bring in the chicken, the chicks rather, and then uh, from there, yes, I start to do, uh, hopefully we, 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 I, I, I continue better than what I am, where I am right now. So yeah. basically what I want to do is to start like kind of doing a fresh construction. Yes. Okay. Uh, and will you be starting that this week? Uh, I think when you look at my records, yes, I can start the construction because that is the amount which I can afford. Okay. But uh, uh, when you look at uh, what I've written there is like the challenge will be then in bringing in the chicks and the feeds you realize from 40 to 200 is uh, uh, is kind of too high for me at the moment. It's a big jump. And you don't need to do it in, at one time. You know, yeah. that's one of the questions that I had was, uh, at what age can you start breeding them? From six months? Day, no, one day old. I can bring in the one day old chickens. Yeah, chicks, yes. Yes, yes, but I mean, but when will those chicks? Are you able to start your breeding program? With six, six months later. Six months, yes. Okay, so that's what I. That's, I think you focus in those stages. Uh, uh, and, and of course, you've got to keep them separate, so you know which chicks you brought in each month, or, you know, what have you. But, I think even uh, by you know, the breeding program is going to dictate, it'll kind of slow the growth down intentionally so that to give you time to, uh, so it doesn't uh, stress financially, uh, do a, what you can, when you can, like, you know that you can't even bring in the next, uh, a few, you know, 10 more or five more until you get a new place, you know, for them. Uh, yeah. So 
so that is the right next step is is to to do that and then i think you uh if you have some six month ones are you if you can start breeding at the same time you're getting a few but you're also starting your own breeding right yeah i would i, I would say like right now since the ones for six months have begun to lay eggs so i would start i'll start breeding with those ones like immediately if i'm not able to bring in uh the new ones immediately yes yeah it doesn't matter where you get them it's cheaper if you can use those eggs and and um, because that's investing for the future that in fact yes. that's the way of investing it back in your business without because you're not selling it for money so you're reinvesting it in your business um yeah exactly if i do that i'm not going to incur any cost at the moment right. yeah i'll just yeah right. it will be a good start it's a good start for me though a little bit slow but it's a good start it's because it's it is a great start and you know, there's a principle uh, that I, I do want to um, just just congratulate you, uh, and it's called delayed gratification. And by you delaying the gratification of instant cash or instant money, uh, and saying, you know, I'm building something for the long term, I'm trying to get to this number, and I'm willing to delay a dollar today so that I can have a hundred dollars tomorrow. <laughs> you know. Uh, and that is what you've done successfully. That is a hard thing for some entrepreneurs to do, and they constantly are spending whatever they have. And so I just, I, I, I congratulate you for being disciplined. Uh, and I think that is one of the greatest attributes an entrepreneur can have is discipline. And that is, for to me, the thousands of th entrepreneurs that I've worked with over the years, the difference between those that succeed and those that don't outside of the Lord and outside of, all, but it that is that discipline of the, of habit of the right habits and the right thinking. They, 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 it's second nature to them. And you're doing that from the very beginning here. And so um, I just, I, I, I applaud you for that. So very good. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing. And it sounds like we uh, hear what you'll be working on this coming week as well uh, with, with expanding that. And, and, uh, and then, and then, uh, Use, getting uh, adding a few uh, chicklets there uh, <laughs> to to the flock so to the herd yeah. all right thank you so much Zipporah thank you okay who who uh, who's next go through your business with me uh, several of you uh, submitted the form uh, the, the the startup guide so uh, give me give me your vision what you're doing uh, I want to know um, Kind of where it's at and and what you plan to do next i have a question in the meantime while yes uh, one question that i i want to get all of your input stephen go ahead and stay on that's fine i would we'll, uh we'll, we'll i'll take you next um are consumers buying online in africa yet like, like if you had a website for your business, do consumers feel safe and is it normal for them to purchase your product and you ship it to them uh, in Africa? Can someone answer that for me? Yes, it is, it is happening a little bit. Okay. When you post a product, they look at it and then either they will come to the shop, mostly they would want to come to the shop so the yeah, because there is right now is just kind of a marketing piece to kind of pre-sell the product and then they still want to come in person to finalize the purchase is that what I'm yeah saying? yeah so but although in some they, they still trust um like amazon i mean we the right we have a few of those that actually you just look at it on on facebook or anywhere social media and then you you make a call you tell them to bring the product you look at it it is it is happening in nairobi okay uh because for some of your businesses that is going to be a great great strategy i can tell you one of the ways we built company big companies back in the early 2000s up until about 2011 
was with Google AdWords and it was through uh, Google search. And uh, the fact is when somebody Googled or used the search engine uh, and put in, you know, I'm looking for cassava mill, then uh, because we had, you know, the website and because the, what we call SEO, search engine optimization and other things like that, uh, the website uh, with videos and so forth, that is what the search engines were looking for. So we'd always be on the first page of the search. Uh, and, and that's where 95% of customers never leave the first page of search. So if you're not on the first page, they're not gonna find you. Um, and, and, and so that is going to be uh, an emerging trend, um, absolutely, I think across the continent as, it, as, as consumer confidence and trust increases and also as delivery improves, as more smartphones are in more people's hands, and depending on who your target market is. Even in the United States, that's not a smart idea. If your target is uh, selling to 70 to 85 year olds, uh, you don't want to do that because they're not on their smartphones. They're not Googling things. They're still looking in a phone book or they are watching TV commercials or listening to radio ads. Uh, so there's a different marketing strategy entirely based on the age demographic that you're trying to reach. Uh, I remember uh, one product that we had that I, I needed to get soccer moms. Well, soccer moms, you know, it, it was different. Facebook didn't, uh, Facebook was had just started. It was in the early, uh, like 2007, 2008. Um, and so, you know, social media wasn't a big thing at that point. It was kind of just starting. And um, so the best way for me to get reach soccer moms was to look at what shows, TV shows, did they all love? Also, they all drove the same kind of vehicles. They all drove minivans. <laughs> uh, they call them minivan moms or soccer moms. Uh, they kind of wore the same clothes. They watched the same TV shows. They, they had the same habits, uh, you know, generally speaking. And so I started looking at uh, how do we partner with those other industries that are not competitors, but they target the same market and then let's work together. So there are some unique strategies based on who your target market is. And there's, we'll get to marketing. I don't want to get ahead. That's in a few weeks. We got to build the business first and make sure that it's structurally the way it needs to be done. Um, and then once you've got this sitting here and you're just trying to grow it, then it's sales and marketing and branding and awareness. And, and the average consumer has to see an ad seven times before they'll take action on it. And that seven times has to be within whatever it is, like within one week, five days, uh, they need to see. So the repetition, it's not enough to just see, show it once. Um, you've got to market to enough people, but not too many people. Uh, and then you also can't market to too small of a pool of people. So it's just constant. Imagine you're in an airplane and there's all these dials and you're constantly just tweaking the different knobs uh, on the stove to get the temperature just right or on the plane to get it just so. That's what running a business is. Except, And then it, it's on all fronts. It's human capital. It's people. It's management. It's, it's the operations. It's the legal uh, it's transportation. It's and then and then it all changes because as uh, Zipporah found out that you know you find out something on the feed or the cost goes up or the cost goes down or you, the, the the supplier that you counted on is going out of business and you got to find a new one. All of these are the challenges uh, that we embrace. Uh, we do not panic. We embrace. Okay. So uh, let me go ahead and I think. Um, uh, Stephen, if you would kindly unmute in, in video and uh, let's go through your business. Okay. Okay, while we're waiting for him, is there someone else that would like to go?
Last call. <laughs> okay, here's my question now. Oh, oh yes, uh, Helen. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, sorry, I delayed to submit mine, but uh, last week I was talking about um, growing the clients, clientele, and uh, you, you took me through what, uh, about what I could do. And uh, that was perhaps word of mouth. That was the first one. So uh, this week, I was able to talk to two clients who came to the studio uh, and told them that I can give them a discount, maybe produce a song, one song if they brought a client. So we agreed and they had to do that. And well, then- um, let, me, let me ask you on that. How, how, what was their response? Were they excited? Were they like, were they looking forward to doing that? Like, oh yes, I'll yeah, I'd love to do that. I'll do that. Yes, actually, they were very happy. And um, one of them, that the a lady, sent me a message that was yesterday that uh, I'll be sending a client to you uh, very soon before the end of this week. Wow! wow. And so it worked. <laughs> Wow. See, that's what, and here's the, the neat thing about that strategy that, that uh, I gave you last week was it, it, it makes your current, it, it's, you know, on uh, so many businesses focus on sale, sales. How do I get more clients, get more clients, more customers. But then on the other hand, it's because all their customers keep dropping off and dropping out and they don't continue buying or they don't keep coming back. And so they don't, so the, you focus on sales and you focus on retention. It's this constant, you know, thing of, of focusing on these two things. Uh, and what I love about that strategy is because it, you structured it right, where it, it properly incentivizes the customer, uh, the client, it properly incentivizes them, but it also makes them happy. It creates retention because now they have a friend that is coming, so they can't stop coming because their friend is coming. So you built in retention, you have a happier customer and your sales are growing. <laughs> so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, also I, I printed some flyers for the music school. Um, our, our target market is as the students, small children. And so we, to take, we have already printed to take to the schools. Um, so that they can, the, the, the children can give to their parents to, to pay for their music lessons. Okay, very good. So you, you uh, when did they get the flyers? Oh, uh, we are yet to take the flyers this week. So we, we prepared them last week, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, how are they going, do they, are they supposed to call you or what's the call to action on the flyer? Yeah, uh, we have given them a telephone number Okay. email address and even direction to our location. Okay, very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to distribute those this week? Yeah. Okay, all right, yes. very good. So that's the action item, uh, the main action item there. And, and mm -hmm. at the same time, as more clients come in, keep having those conversations with, with more clients because, you know, if, if you have, uh, I mean, it's like giving yourself 10 salespeople, you know, uh, mm -hmm. salespeople uh, without having to pay the salary. So, uh, and, and it, uh, it just, I love that it creates happy, happier customers. And also um, to reduce the costs. You remember last week, uh, as I talked about paying the, the producer, the music producer and the uh, the kind of marketer. So I had to talk to them and say, okay, look, uh, because we are not generating a lot of income, we will be paying you as per the job work, the, the job done. So if um, you produce one client, then we give you a percentage out of that. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we agreed on that. They were not very happy though, but um, 
Yeah. Well, I, I mean, look, that. I, I would like to just sit around and not have to do anything and somebody just pay me too. But life doesn't work that way and business doesn't work that way. Um, but I do think paying per job uh, is, is, is right. And not only in, in this situation, um, and especially when people are re renting the studio or recording something and you don't need them outside of that. Uh, but I like the fact though, that you bring them in to on the percentage of it because that's actually best for them. Uh, even as opposed to you saying, okay, I give you, you know, 20, uh, you know, to come in and do this for this job, giving them the percentage takes the guesswork out of it because if you, based on the size of the, the, uh, you can never go in the hole that way. So if, uh, if you had committed to pay them X amount, but you wanted to do this deal that was, you know, right break even, then you wouldn't make any money on it. But by doing the percentage, you know, then that's, that's better. And it does also enroll them. Hey, if, uh, if you want to, you know, any clients, get more clients, you can make more money doing it this way, you know? Uh, and if they don't understand that, um, you know, but we, let me tell you this, what's interesting is in the United States, um, all artists are freelancers, all recording studio uh, personnel like that. None of them are on payroll. Uh, it's all uh, what they call freelance or contract, independent contractor. Uh, where we're going to, you know, you pay for what you use or you're, or you're paid for the, to perform a service. Um, you're not on the payroll. So it's interesting to me that, uh, and I don't know if it's like that on that continent and it's just that they didn't, they had a different deal or maybe you may just be getting in line with the rest of the industry and that's what everyone else is doing too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this week, um, I, I intend to do uh, short video clips uh, and then post on social media. Uh, like, for example, uh, um, when someone's singing, uh, those short video clips just to, to advertise the studio, as well as the music school. When a, a child, the, the teacher is teaching, and I take a short video clip and, and post on social media. Yes, that's great because it will take the fear. In that business, they probably wonder, well, what's the class like? What does it look like? What, do, what does it sound like? Am I the only one? Is there 30 other people? In it? You know, what is the, what is it like? And so it removes fear of the unknown. And that's most people's biggest fear is just not knowing what to expect. So when you post pictures or short videos like that of the experience, which is what you're selling, uh, then I think that goes a long way. And I think it will go nicely. If there's a way to, to make sure that people, the parents of the children can see that um, by either uh, making sure you have how to contact you on Facebook or whatever social media platform you're uploading it to, um, have that URL on the flyer or somehow you want the flyer and the social media or uh, to, to flow together. And uh, some are gonna find you on social media only and some will see the flyers and then go to social media and then reach out. But it gives yet another uh, voice, sales voice uh, there for you. Uh, that way they're not all too disconnected. Uh, it's a different channel, but it's the same message. The same product, you know, same thing that you're selling. So yeah, very good. I love that idea, especially for your business. I love it. Very worthwhile. Excellent. Uh, okay. So you'll continue, keep talking to existing clients about your uh, referral program. And, uh, and then the, 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 the clips, that will be great. And save that too, because um, uh, you will use all of that in, 
in different promotional material, you know, uh, rather it's a 2021 year in review, you know, or uh, here was my student uh, playing clarinet or flute at uh, on January 1st, here's them playing December 31st, you know, and have, you know, it's, it's uh, they obviously weren't that good here, but then they are really good at the end of the year, or maybe you do it in 90 days. Uh, this person, it's their first uh, first lesson, yay, you know, and then uh, record them again after 90 days so people can see how far you can come in 90 days. 90 days from now, you can be playing an instrument that you've never played before uh, and actually be able to play a little song or, you know, those type things. But that's that'll be another marketing thing for you to think about as you're doing these videos, any new clients, make sure you get them on that very first lesson. And it should hurt my ears, right? I mean, it should be so bad <laughs> because I haven't played that instrument before, but capture that so that you can then quickly say, you know, show day one, you know, bad, you know, 90 day, you know, very pretty and uh, or, or, or by the year. But those are the kind of things that, it's success stories and people are going to start seeing, oh, my child can improve if we send them to this music school. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Thank you. My pleasure. With pleasure. Yes. All right. Thank you, Helen. Great uh, items, uh, action items for this week. I, I, I think you'll have great success. Okay. Who else? Uh, Action items for this week. That's the uh, that's where we are as we wrap up here. Action items for this week. What do you need to do next in your business for it to grow this week? Okay. All right. Sorry. Oh um, yes. Yes, Booker. Yes, sir. What? Uh, pardon. Oh, pardon. I. Asked what uh, action steps do you need to take in your business between now and next Tuesday? Because we won't we we meet next Tuesday, uh, mm -hmm. but we do not meet that we are not going to meet on Tuesday, June first. Mm -hmm. uh, I will be in Mexico. Uh, so we do not meet uh, Tuesday, June 1st. Um, so we have next Tuesday. And so my question was, what uh, are you going to do in your business this week? And uh, so what do you think, Booker, for, for starting a car lot, what do you plan to do this week to, to start that business? So uh, since it's a... Is a, is a it, I'm going to, it, it, it's, it's a startup from the beginning. I need to, I need to look at uh, my business plan so that I can get funding to, to, to begin. The, the location where I want to set up the business, I need also to look at the, the market niche what other players are doing? What am I bringing new that will uh, make my business be unique from the others? So those are the lines of what I should be doing the next one week. Okay, yeah. I agree, but let me streamline it a little bit for you. Uh, use the business startup guide that we have in the learning center, the learning management system, the LMS. Uh, do download that and fill it out uh, because it's going to ask you the questions in order that you need to answer for that. Uh, yes. I'm not so concerned about your business plan right now because how in the world can you plan for something you don't know? Uh, so what I'm what I want to know is, you know, what what brand uh, are you going to have? What's your business name going to be for your, um, you know, for this? What uh, are you going to sell? I, I, and here's the thing. I, I do not think it's a good idea for you to try to get funding 
um, the way I would do it if I were you yes. is, and this is the way brokers here do it. Uh, yes. There's even one broker I know that does this from their home. They don't even have a, like a car lot. Uh, but they take re order requests. So people can go to their website yes. or email her or call her and say, I'm looking for a 2013 Toyota, you know, or a yes. Land Rover or whatever. And yes. um, I would like it to have, you know, about 90,000 miles, I, under 100, but over 80 because I can't afford the vehicles that are have less than 80,000 miles. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's what I'm looking for. And, and if I can have a green one, that's great or a black or white car, you know, whatever. So they give yeah. whatever color vehicle they want. And then if I, so, and then you would bro, be the broker. You say you've, you got the order. Oh, Oh, you also need to, they need to say, okay. And I'm willing to pay, you know, 14,000 or, you know, what the equivalent of that 1.4 million, Kenya shillings or yeah. whatever, whatever it is. Uh, yeah. So then you go back to, um, you go to places, you look for that vehicle and then you yes. try and arrange a price that is below what they're willing to pay. And uh, I'll tell you the way the two brokers that I know, including one that I have bought two vehicles from, Yes. Their deal is we will find you any car you want and you pay a thousand dollars more than the cost. Uh, uh, to So if I'm able to buy it, even though it's 15, a $15,000 car, if I'm able to buy it for 11,000, you only pay 12,000. So they, that's how they built trust with me. Not that they were going to try and go buy the cheapest, cheapest car they could and then still sell it to me at the highest price I was willing to pay. Mm. So, we really were able to work together on that. I didn't feel, cause it didn't matter to them what they, uh, how cheap they got. They weren't going to try and get, find a, a bad car. Uh, and quite frankly, mm -hmm. if it was more expensive, I wouldn't think they're taking advantage of me. They just bought a better car with lower miles or a newer year. And mm -hmm. um, because they were still only going to make a thousand bucks no matter what. Um, mm -hmm. So when you're thinking through what you're going to do, th th these are the things you should consider, what your business model is going to be. Yes. Uh, but quite frankly, if get the, getting the customers is, is, is a big part of it. So uh, you may be, need to think more of marketing may be the essence of your business. Mm -hmm. You don't need a bunch of inventory. You don't need all of those things to be a broker. What you need is a very consumer friendly name, a very consumer friendly website where, where you may be able to promote different things, uh, promote even different vehicles. Uh, a lot of realtors do that. Now, this is what I want you to, uh, th uh, this week, I want you to borrow yeah. from realtors on yeah. this business model because realtors in their mm -hmm. advertisements, they show properties that aren't even their listings right? Because they get a commission if they bring a buyer. Yes. The other realtor represents the seller. And of course, realtors like to represent both buyers and sellers, but most of the time that doesn't happen. Uh, but they like it that way. But you are basically going to represent the buyers uh, of, of vehicles and automobiles. You're brokering that. Um, and so you could find all cars that are currently for sale by individuals, by companies, you know, by different car lots. Uh, there, I, I promise there are auto auctions. You need to figure out how to uh, register for those and go to those. Yeah. So you know how you can buy cars cheap for yourself and then resell it down the road when you have capital. Um, but for right now, uh, you can, cars that you know uh, mm -hmm. that you can get at one price, you can go ahead and get all the pictures and all the specifications, put those on your website, put those on social media, at the price where it builds in your profit. And all you have to do is sell a few cars, five, 10 cars over the next couple months, three months. And you might have yourself, you know, five to $10,000 USD. Um, and uh, so, and, and you did not spend uh, any money. What you did was hustle. What you did was work hard to find the yeah. deal and then to create the website and to create the marketing and the branding and the trust um 
so, so that is the direction uh, I would encourage you to be thinking about this week, because what I heard to begin with is a recipe for how you will not go anywhere, because there will always be a reason it doesn't start, or uh, and that's just not that's just not what to, how to do it. Yes. Does that help yes. give some direction for this week? Yeah, yeah, that that that's a good. In fact, it's a, an excellent direction that, that 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 I should embark on. At least I've had some insight of because uh, uh, my main thinking was uh, the financing bit of it, but uh, but at, uh, but now I've I've understood that I can start it even with it without finances. Yeah, I just go on with the, the 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 ones that you told me. Make a good website. Go to realtors look in what they're doing just updating my website and uh with cars that other people are selling but that you've you can get and then you're selling it for you know a profit a 10 percent more or what have you uh yes and uh, which is very fair uh yeah. and um yeah and then it's just a matter of driving you know getting the people to come look at they you become the source if i want a new vehicle i need to go or a used vehicle i need to go uh I need to go to Booker's website. I need to go to whatever the name of, 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 the, yeah, of the of the business. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I think by 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 Tuesday next week, I think by Tuesday next week, I should be having a long list of what exactly is now the way forward from what we've uh, what I've gathered. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And uh, Priska Kimbole, I, th I think your hand is up. Did you have something? Uh, 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 yes, doc uh, doctor. I wanted to just mention that for this, um, for this week, I think my main uh, 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 problem is to really figure out because my product, as I mentioned, has, has gone into all the shop. You know, a lot of shops, uh, you know, 29 shops, and we need to have what are called merchandisers in the shops. Um, I mean, uh, the, 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 these box stores won't, um, um, they, they won't prepare the shelf for you. I mean, you need to do that yourself. Yes. So we, we ride on the big companies, you know, like the big milling companies or whatever, to use their guy and say, hey, can you do this you know, for me? And um, the problem I've been having is that sometimes those chaps that we have relied on are not refilling our shelves. You know, they're, they're not refilling the shelf. And then we, the, the, the product ends being destroyed in the back store. It's not even being kept properly. And then I have these huge you know, returns. Now I need to, I think in the coming week, I need to know, do we have a merchandiser, you know, that we have a finger placed on them in all the stores and how do we communicate with them, you know, uh, and know that yes, our product is on the store. Are they making the orders? Because they are the ones who need to make the order, you know, when the, um, when the to, to when the the, the 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 product is finished at the at you know in the back store or on the shelf, yeah. So I need to get that organized. Yes, yes, that's wonderful. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. That is great next steps, and I completely agree with you on that. I think that's mm -hmm. going to help sales. It helps get the story mm -hmm. out. It builds relationship with each store manager. Uh, yeah. I really like that. I think it's it's accomplishing multiple things with one action, which as entrepreneurs, we have to take $1 and stretch it. And that is exactly what that does. So that is wonderful. All right, very good. Thank you all. Let me close uh, our session out here in a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus name, we thank you for our time together. We thank you for your goodness, oh Lord. Thank you for these students. Thank you that they are wanting to build businesses that glorify you for your purpose. May we work diligently. Colossians says, whatever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Do it with everything you have. May these students do it with everything they have. 
May we do our work this week with excellence, our very best, not second best, not after we've given our main job everything and given everything to everybody else. No, we do this as unto the Lord, not as unto men. We don't do what we do for men's applause. We don't do what we do just for a buck or a profit. We do it to glorify you, which requires us to give it our all with excellence. Thank you for the discernment. Thank you for the ideas. Thank you for the thinking and the strategy that you gave us this week so that we know exactly what we should embark on uh, over these coming days prior to bringing us together again next Tuesday. Please go with my brothers and sisters. Please uh, give them strength, protect them physically, their physical bodies, uh, nourish them spiritually, mentally, emotionally. And I pray that you'd be with their families. And I pray that you would be with their employees and their staff and their contractors, and that you would bless them in Jesus name this week. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. 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 Blessings to Amen. you. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Bye. Bye. Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.